What's up, guys? Hey, I just wanted to uh, share uh, how I set up my uh, car hauler. Um, yeah, this is kind of a uh, a holy grail trailer for me, man. Like, I, there's been a lot of buildup to getting this trailer. <laughs> um, I did a bunch of work for somebody and and as payment i got a an 18 foot like equipment trailer um that you know it worked kind of for what i was doing it was more made for hauling you know a heavy piece of equipment a tractor an excavator or something like that it had flip up ramps on the back um it was kind of narrow it wasn't the full you know uh 102 inch uh, width like your your normal car haulers are um, and it had like a, a, a rib going all the way around the perimeter of the the deck sticking up so like you couldn't load anything like with the with the tractor you know on the come up alongside the trailer and load anything on it like it was really a, a it was a nice trailer it was just really kind of a, a, a you know, it had a specific purpose. It's not not very versatile. So I ended up selling that thing, um, and then ended up only having to spend another five hundred dollars after what I made off of that trailer to get this one. So it was it was really nice. Um, so most most of your car haulers are tip, you know sixteen, maybe up to twenty feet. And the, the trailer I always used at my old job for, you know, 10 years recovering broken down trucks, fleet trucks, was a 22 foot, uh, 20 and 2 foot dovetail. And we had that trailer, um, we had special ordered it because we really wanted a 22 versus the, you know, the readily available 20 foot, um, so that's what I was after. That's what I was looking for. Um, and it's really hard to find a 22-foot car hauler. Um, so around the time I, I, you know, had the money and was, was actively looking, this thing popped up. Uh, I believe it's P&T trailers. They're from way down south. There's trailers made in Alabama. And uh, there was a guy who was hauling them, bringing them up here and selling them. Kind of was like a side gig. Uh, and so this thing came up and it's 24 feet. Uh, it's 22 with a two foot dovetail. And uh, so I was like, holy cow, you know, like, but and then the next thing was like, well, what does it got for axles? Because that's another thing the. You, the vast majority of car haulers have um, five lug axles, 3,500 pound axles. And, uh, you know, they're, they're adequate, but um, I, 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 I spent a lot of time replacing bearings and, and other parts on 3,500 pound axles. They're, they're just, it's not really a big fan of them, so. Um, I was really hoping to get one with with six lug axles because you you jump to six lug with fifty two hundred and six thousand pound axles and uh, it, it's a it really is a huge upgrade in the size of the the bearings the spindles the 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 axle tubes everything is just a lot bigger. Um, you can just change the uh, outer bearings on these um and races and you basically turn them into six thousand pound and the seven thousand pound axles the eight lug axles from what i'm told are are uh, kind of based off of this same this same axle too i can't i couldn't tell you exactly what was is different with the seven thousand pound but I, i'm almost positive you can take a a 7k hub and 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 slide it right on these uh, spindles as far as i know but um so yeah it was it was just a it was a huge score man it was really good i'm super excited to get this thing so 
Uh, these are rated at 5,200, so it's got a 10,400 pound GVW. Um, but yeah, I wanted to uh, I want to talk to you guys about the how I did my winch box up here. So I found this box on uh, Facebook Marketplace for uh, I think I paid $140 for it, which I thought it did really well. Um, and because I, I, you know, I put a lot, I put winches on uh, quite a few different trailers, and it was always either out in the weather or I built some kind of little box around just the winch or something along those lines. And um, I'd always thought that, like, man, it'd be really nice if you could just uh, put the winch inside a box, inside a toolbox. So that's what I started with, and. Uh, so so this kind of bulkhead bar you know stopper up here was was already on the trailer um so i just built this simple little bracket in the center you know with a plate and a couple other pieces of flat bar and welded it all into the this bulkhead um it, to give you a, a you know a mount inside the box so basically the winch is mounted inside there and the aluminum is just kind of sandwiched so really really simple you know and i just had to cut a hole there for the the fair lead um i welded a couple kind of d-ring mounts on here um you know it gives you somewhere to to clip your your hook when you're not using it it also gives you a uh if you're pulling something really heavy, uh, you can, you know, you can run a pulley block, a snatch block, and then run your, your cable back to one of these mounts. Um, and, uh, yeah, double up your, your pulling power. So, and yeah, I just got a cheap, cheap light bar out here. <laughs> So the, it's just this is just a, a a cheap Amazon winch. It's rated at thirty five hundred pounds. Um, so guys, you don't need an eight thousand pound winch or a twelve thousand pound winch on your trailer. Okay, you just don't. I think people are looking at the the winch capacity. You know, like oh, I need an eight thousand pound winch. You know, because I'm going to be pulling six thousand pound trucks up onto my trailer and it just it really doesn't work like that like you're un unless you are pulling trucks out of a uh, out of a ditch or pulling a mud truck out of a mud hole recovering vehicles with your trailer which I, i'm not really sure why you would be doing that but you just don't need that big of a winch and it you Everywhere you turn around, you see these huge winches mounted on the front of trailers. And I guess if you're, you know, you really want to overkill it and you, you got a, a winch for, for cheap, okay, I guess. But if you're purchasing a winch to pull vehicles on your trailer, there's no sense in having anything bigger than a 3,500-pound winch. Um, it's the size that I used for, for a decade at my old job and the absolute heaviest trucks in the fleet uh you know crew cab dually service body trucks that little 3500 pound winch should pull them right up on the trailer without a problem okay it's, it's just as long as the vehicle is rolling it has tires under it <laughs> you're not trying to drag something with no axles up on your trailer um it, it's just the, anything bigger is unnecessary. So I just made this is the plate that came with the winch, and then I just kind of added that bottom um, piece of angle down there, you know, to give it a good good base. Um, so this this is the controller. Um, and this is this is where your actual controller 
connects into the, the actual winch solenoid. Um, so I just ran that lead around over here to my little switch panel here. So you got a wired in controller, but like, like most switches comes with a, a remote as well. You just plug that little receiver right there into that same receptacle. And having a remote is really nice, man. If you have a dead vehicle that you're you're quickly trying to, you know, get off the side of the road, uh, you can hook your winch up and then you can just go sit in the truck, you know, and, and run the your remote and, and steer the thing right up on the trailer. So it's it's really it's worthwhile. You know, and, and most, like I said, most winches come with the, with the remote now. So, um, I just got a, a 24, 24 series battery in here. Nothing too crazy. Um, so I just built this simple little switch panel here. Uh, this one is your, that's just a license plate light that I mounted in here, you know, in the dark, it lights the inside of the box right up. This one here is for your, your light bar, the big light bar. Uh, this is just a, you know, a, a little USB uh, charger. You know, I, I, I'm not gonna be probably charging my phone with my trailer, I guess, maybe, but, the main reason I got this is you have a little on off button. You can turn this whole unit on and off. But when you turn it on, it has a uh, a, a voltage readout on it. So, you know, before you leave, it's kind of cool too. You can you can push the button through the cover there. And you know, you can check your battery before you leave. You know, you come out here and you're you're going to go uh recover something on the side of the road you can just come in here and double check and make sure that you you know the battery's not reading 11 volts <laughs> so it's pretty slick again another another amazon buy i mean probably freaking eight dollars or something when i where i paid for that but um the breakaway the electric brake breakaway battery uh, they're usually mounted you know this one was was mounted down here kind of sort of underneath where this box sits now. Um, these typically, because they're on the front of the trailer and just getting blasted with, with the elements behind the, behind the truck, um, they corrode. You end up having corrosion issues with these things, and that's the vast majority of the time it's what causes them to fail. It's, it's not the battery failing itself, it's just... They just get hammered with, with shit coming off the back of the truck, and then it, it just prematurely destroys the battery. So that was, I moved it up into here. Figured why not? There's a lot of room in here. So um, so for all the, the lights and everything else, I needed some kind of, uh, um, you know, junction terminals in order to be able to pull power off of everything. To run everything so I put these on and they're like a through bulkhead uh, battery terminal you know so they kind of double as a as a, uh, a junction terminal but also it gives you terminals on the outside of the box so if you're you know God forbid you do you are out winching doing something and, and your battery dies you know you can you can just hook your jump pack or or even what what I had at uh, my job is we had a set of jumper cables that um, were long enough to reach from the, the the front of the truck back to the trailer. So um, even if you had a totally junk battery, you could you know you could still winch something up on the trailer just using the truck's power. So you know, and if 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 you wanted to actually hook up a battery charger too, you could you know not even got to open the lid. You can just come out here and hook up to those two terminals. So this was the last thing that I added here. This is another cheap Amazon buy. This is I think a 12 watt solar panel. You know, for as cheap as it was, I figured I'd give it a try. You know, he's just sitting out here tending the battery, you know, every single day. 
So, um, it's kind of neat. It's got a little indicator light on it. Red flashing means that it's actively charging. Um, these come with a, a little harness that uses a your typical SAE, you know, two-prong connector. So, I just bought this little bulkhead uh, re SAE receptacle and then just cut the cut the lead down a little bit shorter so it just plugs in there so this is something new I've, I've never done this before but i figured you know like i said this stuff's cheap enough and i'll give it a shot and it had really good reviews so yeah we'll see how it actually works out i'm curious uh i i think it goes solid green when it when the battery is fully charged so you know, i guess we'll we'll <laughs> We'll see when it when it uh, determines that the battery is fully charged. I think it's reading 12.6 volts right now. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. I just wanted to show you guys how I set mine up. Maybe give you guys some ideas for how you want to do yours. Um, and uh, yeah, I, you know you. It's not something that you use very often, so what what typically ends up happening, you know, is the, the the battery fails prematurely because it's just sitting out here and, you know, hardly ever used. And, and people maybe, uh, they, put, uh, they put a little bit too much confidence in your, your, your truck charging the battery uh, because in the, your seven-way trailer plug... There is a terminal that you typically wire just a 12 volt positive. You wire it right to the, the positive terminal of the battery in the truck. So, you know, once the truck is running, um, it's charging the battery back here. But you you got to figure it's a long distance to go, and you have maybe a 10 gauge wire coming from the truck all the way back here. It's not doing much. Um, to to charge up your your battery in your trailer, it's really not. It's it's more like a trickle charger, you know, like that. It, it's not something you want to rely on to just hook your your trailer up to and take off running. You know, uh, you don't want to depend on the the truck keeping up on your battery when it's it's sitting around ninety percent of the time. So, you know, it's a good thing to hook up. You definitely want to have it hooked up, and it, it does help. But, um, so I know that was kind of the the idea behind putting this on here. Is, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to keep the battery topped up. It really doesn't. You know, you just have just a, a few milliamps going into the, the battery, and it will keep up on it for, you know, a long period of time. So I'm really curious how... There's there's no way of telling now, but I guess we'll see how long my uh, my uh, battery lasts in here because they normally, like I said, they, they they just fail prematurely because they're not maintained. You know, people just maybe even at the at the least just bring a jump pack with them and hook it up, and if they need it, but um, so I like I said, I guess we'll see we'll see how. How many years or months <laughs> I can get out of this battery? So, and I'll be pretty well done with this trailer, uh, setting this trailer up. The only thing I wanted to do is it has the little slide-in ramps back there, but they're they're steel, and they are ungodly heavy, man. And I am pretty well handicapped here. Like they're backbreakers for me, man. I hate them. That was another thing that we. Uh, we had bought for the company trailer were aluminum ramps that fit into those same tracks and you know there's a lot of people who are pretty critical of that and they're like you, you can't run aluminum you're gonna bend those the first time you put a heavy truck on them and i'm here to tell you what the heaviest vehicles in the fleet um did not even phase those aluminum ramps um they were extremely strong um and they were just a joy to to <laughs> deploy back there. They're you slide them out and carry them around with one hand. Like they were awesome. Not something that 
I'm really willing to pay for though, unfortunately. They were, I think from what I remember, they were just shy of $400. Um, you know, they worth every penny. Um, just, I'm too cheap for $400, so my plan was to go over to, uh, the, you know, my old place of work, not far from here, and, and uh, measure them up. Uh, measure the, the the rectangle tube you know that they used and the thickness of it and all that type of stuff and then just see if I could come home and uh, uh, get the get the materials and just just TIG weld them up myself make my own basically that that fit my my tracks you know specifically because it was like I said it, they were just really really nice to use but after that, I think I'm going to call it on this trailer. Um, you know, being that's from from uh, Alabama, they uh, they're not super concerned about corrosion down there. Not anywhere near as much as maybe you should be up here in Michigan. So the whole bottom of this trailer is basically not painted at all. It's like bare steel underneath. So. I'm going to have to do something, and, you know, and that's the case with most trailers, even in, whether it's built up here or down here, they don't care if these things last. They don't want them to last. They want them to you to come get a new one every couple of years, so I'm not doing that. This is my end-all, be-all trailer, so what, uh, what I end up doing, I'm not 100% sure yet, uh, but um, it definitely needs to get coated with, with epoxy. And uh, what I'd like to do at that point in time is actually, you know, spend a couple days and fully seam weld all of these joints, um, top and bottom. So I, I really want the, I want this trailer to hold up. So, and that's really the best way to do it. You know, you could, you could seam seal and. There's a few other, you know, things that you could try to do to keep the trailer from rusting out. But really, if you just had the trailer blasted and bring it home and just, you know, it's probably going to take a whole spool of wire. <laughs> but it's not like it would be hard, you know. Just kind of mindless welding, filling all these seams in, and then get it coated with epoxy. This trailer would, abs would outlive me. You know, by a long shot, the thing would last forever. So, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, maybe if you guys got car haulers or you did something a little bit differently, let me know. I'm curious. Um, and, uh, yeah, that'll about do it. Thanks for watching, guys.